Ao Shalom Ras Tefari Ne Ras Yadinos Tefari Ne. I am Wendem Yadom of the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty Yehuda Moa Anbesa Machiber, and we're broadcasting currently on um, Rastafari Sabbatical, Sabbatical, not Sabbatic, not Sabbatic, but Sabbatical channel on the YouTubes, as well as um, some of the other sites of brothers and sisters posting I and I vid, so you may have see this vid reposted elsewhere, or on Ethiopian World Net, and if um, that site go down, just put 911 behind Ethiopian World Net, and hopefully y'all willing, we'll be broadcasting on Ethiopian World Net 911. That's in case of a, of an emergency. All right. So um, there's a couple of subject matters that um, studies that we have been on, and we're still in the the Sukkot season. Um, just a word on Sukkot that Sukkot, um, which is tabernacles, tabernacling. This this seven seven days beginning from September 20th, um, no, actually September, you could say, forgive I, September 30th to October 7th, 2012. So this is the time or this is the season for the high holy day of Sukkot, which is Boots, which is a memorial, as well as there's a prophetic of it, and we've been pointing that this is, you know, that, that Yahweh's word, the covenant, and, and the, the Torah portion, the keys in there, you know, returning into the Kal Kidan of the Benai Barit, returning to the covenant. But we have to recognize the role of Yeshua, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the role of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we know the whole thing about the Jays, but we're speaking to a mixed multitude. And a mixed multitude, one's coming from different points of view. So you'll hear us, you know, utilize some of the different names within some of the different languages, even on the Meskel of the cross. In fact, let me bring this up right here, because we're watching a, a documentary. Um, okay, where is that? Uh, a documentary, the one on Yeshua on the cross. Can you, let's see, can you find that one right there? Bring that one up. Um, the most recent one. Yes, um, a documentary on the YouTubes is pretty interesting. In fact, it's so interesting that, you know, as we watch, um, you know, ideas come to mind and sometimes we have to put it on pause for a moment to just, um, you know, digest, you understand, digest these ideas or even note them or even begin, you know, a, a spiritual and a free that's good right there, yeah, a free, a free association, a free association of um, the spiritual, comparing spiritual with spiritual, so this um, might be a first part right here during the Sukkot 2012, Sukkot 2012, now a lot of folks have been hearing about um, what they call it, December 21st, uh, 2012, and the whole Mayan thing, so forth and so on, now, there's a significance when we recognize time, and the Bible teaches us that we're to redeem the time because the days are evil, but do we even recognize the signs of the time? And if we see all these signs of the time, what time is it really? You know what I'm saying? Telling time, what time is it really? Now, if we don't know who we are, and this is what the program, um, the, the video uh, documentary right here, actually let's go right here, called um, Documentary, quote, The Curses of the Israelites, end quote. Um, most of the brothers and sisters probably are familiar with um, the basic foundation, the basic Beta Israel, or House of Israel Foundation. Now, um, in my father's house, in Abba's house, there are many mansions, so there's many different kinds of Israelites or Hebrew Israelites according to their particular stage of rebirth and growth and knowledge and so forth and so on. But the basic foundation of the basic of, of the Beta Israel 
remains um, one and the same. It's just that in different, you know, among different brothers and sisters and different communities, it takes on different characteristics because we are a peculiar people as Yahweh in the Torah so states and so says. So, like I said, there's a couple of different subject matters we want to share with the eye of them and with the brothers and sisters, and we're just going to begin right here where we're at. So once again, um, shalom to the Rastafari, to the Beit Israel, to all the faithful um, followers of the Moshiach in spirit and in truth. Um, we would say Christian, but then that's a, there's a lot of connotation with that that we're not going to address right now. But for Sukkot, Sukkot should come as a recharging of our spiritual uh, batteries. We have now passed the days of judgment. We, we have passed the days of, of judgment in this particular Aude Sinabitat uh, or within the, 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 the circuit. And then with the Torah portion readings and feedings, we had um, 52 right now, we have 53 and 54. And the, at the end of Sukkot, there's the eighth day. Now, in the New Testament, a lot of these things are referred to, especially by Shaul or by Saul, known as Ahuaria Paulos, or Paul by his, um, his uh, Greco-Roman name. Um, and these uh, seasons are very important, especially for Beit Israel, for those of the people of his people who still keep the covenant. So it's like, the, it's like the Shabbat or the Senbet, the Sabbath. If we are keeping the covenant, we're not out there in the world, we're not out there under the curses, the curses for disobedience. And on a higher level, and this brings another particular document to mind, and um, we want to actually write up a little something on this, but let me just share this with you. Um, bring it forward to... Uh, well, well, no, hold it, hold it right there, hold it right there. This is a document on some Luciferian stuff. Now, you'd be like, well, why the Luciferian stuff? Because um, you have to know your enemy. You know what I'm saying? We're in a spiritual warfare, right? And there's a document out there called Luciferian Fallen Angel Worship. It's beginning in serpent, dragon, and sun worship. And this particular documentary touches on that, you know, as a, as a people that have lost their heritage. Now, in the Ethiopian World Federation, we know it's about our divine heritage and mentions Ethiopia. We know in the Bible there's a particular, peculiar connection to the Beit Israel, both in Old Testament and New Testament. It's like the Ethiopians keep, uh, um, in a sense, popping up. In, in the scripture at these significant times. Now, that should make one go, hmm, there's something with that. And of course, some Israelites will point to a few of the negative areas where, quote, Ethiopia or Ethiopians are mentioned, such as um, Asa, King Asa of, of, of the Beta Israel, and uh, one named Zara. You know what I'm saying? But you have to remember that when we say Ethiopian, it's like, when we say um, European today, you know, or, or, or overstand this, the whole continent was called or known or referred to as as um, Ethiopia at various times. But let's not to get into that. Stay tuned for the for the for the et the et right the E T the God particle. I want you to stay tuned for that, y'all willing. That will be a wonderful um, study a lecture. So hopefully see it posted on this or one of the, the channels. Just look for it, all right? But, but, but subscribe here, and hopefully we'll be able to bring that forward in this due time. So I was reading through, scanning over, actually, this particular article. Um, the Holy Spirit directed our attention to Ruach HaKodesh to come here, and we saw this here that we'll share with you concerning us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. In fact, what we'll do is we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll bring this um we'll bring this back right around right around here and just have that moving while we speak and before we get into this so we have exile captivity and the religions right now in this particular article it says um Elohim 
Baruchu Ha Elohim, the true God, Baruchu, blessed be He, created Israel. He created Israel, or called Yisrael, to be the light for the Gentile nations, for the Goyim nations, because they were walking in darkness spiritually. All right, so we recognize, we have to recognize this truth that that. Elohim, Ha Elohim, the true God created Israel for a particular purpose. Now, what was what was that purpose that um, Israel was created for? It was to be the light, right? The true light. We're not talking about no counterfeit Illuminati. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking about the the false light of so-called Lucifer. All right, a, a fallen bodyguard cherub. You know, and, and see our documentary or our lecture on the on the bodyguard revolution. All right, the bodyguard revolution. Interesting, as above, so below. What occurred in heaven, and then what occurred during the reign of our God King of Moa and Bessazem Negeda Yehuda Kedamawi Haila Salase Siyumek Ziabi Nugusuneges the Ethiopia. And we know our Hebrew. Um, Ethiopian Hebrew and so-called African American Hebrew, Beta Israel Hebrews from such a day recognize that connection to Ethiopia that many of the of the Project Jews, you know, or the Project Israelites, so forth and so on. Uh, there's a whole other generation that has some of the foundational Hebrew Israelite connection, but are missing um, are missing. Are missing vital keys. But now, this particular documentary here, The Curse of the Israelites, it points out, actually, in the a, in, in a earlier part of it, um, it points out the Willie Lynch letter, the, you know, the Willie Lynch papers, and makes the connection with 1619. This is where we wanted to kind of get into in this particular, in this particular um, recording right here. Um, and how the the first slaves or the first Hebrews who were enslaved were brought over to the Americas roughly 1619. Now, many have spoken about this 400-year, you know, what does this 400-year period of time, what does it refer to? Some say, well, we've said 1530. Remember 1530, you count 400 years, you have 1930. We can look at 1896, right, and you count 400 years, and we have, um, well, 1896 from 1492, 1492 to 18, uh, 1492 to 1892, all right, you know, and then we have, now we have 1619, now people say, well, why are these different dates? It has to all be one day, but when we study the scripture, not so, you understand, because we have to remember that Israel would always have a king to sit upon the throne, all right? Let's pause it right around here. That Israel would always have a king to sit upon the throne, all right? And I noticed that that's, that's scripture right there, all right? That they would never lack a man to sit upon the throne of, of David, in other words, in the scripture. There would always be a remnant. Now, we find that remnant in Ethiopia, all right? And we find that particular remnant in the king of kings of Ethiopia, or in Kadamawi, Haile Selassie. Now, of course, many different ones, depends on their knowledge or their lack thereof, will probably tell you different things about Haile Selassie, whether favorably or unfavorably, so forth and so on. But then this is, you know, this should not surprise you. You understand when you really start to study the truth for yourself. So now we have 72 nations. Right, 72 nations, 72, now I want you to keep that in mind, 72 nations, and those who have studied uh, Hanok or the Ethiopic Book of Enoch will also notice that 72, there were 72 shepherds, remember? And some say there were 72 angels that ruled over the different nations, all right? Now, 72 of them come to Ethiopia, which we have also in the Bible in many um prophetic ways, Ethiopia, this man was born there, Psalm 87, um, um, princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God, 
um, Psalm 68:31. We also have, aren't you like unto the, the children of the Ethiopians to me, or children of Israel? That is in um, Amos 9 and 7. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, there the 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 um the daughter of my disperse, or even my sup my suppliants, the daughter of my disperse, shall bring my offering. Now the river of Ethiopia is significant. We've touched on that in other lectures, and we've even shown the map and showed how you find even even this documentary that we've been watching touches on it as well, where um you find the the, the heaviest concentration of those who still are um, Hebraic in their roots or have, have a culture and a nationality that is heavily linked to the biblical Israelites in East Africa and along the east part of the river. Now, when you cross the river, you have to recognize what God's boundaries are because many people think that many Israelites who think that just the little beachfront property, they think that just the beachfront property that's over there that everybody's arguing about and the, the Jebusis and the, the Edomites and the other Russian so-called Jewish folks are arguing over this little piece of land with the Philistimawian or the, the, the Philistines or the Palestinians. They would think that that is God's land, that little piece of land. But yet, as we pointed out elsewhere, if you go to um, uh, Genesis 15, and if you look at the, the boundaries of the land that was given to um, Father Abraham, you will notice the fullness of it. You understand that it's from the river of, of, of Egypt, which is also the same river of Ethiopia. In fact, the root of the Egyptian ancient civilization comes from Ethiopia. Then you go to the Euphrates, and that's before you enter into Babylon. Now, the people were taken captive, right, into the Babylonian captivity, circa 7-2, I think it was 7-2-2, two, two, and they even show that on, on, on the map right here on this particular, I mean, in this particular documentary that we have um, linked to before, all right? So anyway, just hear this, and we're going to get into this part. Mainly this is about 1619 to 2019 and how this connects with the particular menorah that we have highlighted in the other lectures um, from one Messianic uh, Jewish woman, but it's also based on the heavens and it's based on our, our Torah, you know, the, the Hebrew calendar, you know what I'm saying? In other words, our covenant, the, the elements in the covenant. So Elohim had, ha Elohim Baruch Hu had created Israel to be the light for the Gentile nations, the light and the illumination for the Gentile nations, because they, the Goyim, they were walking in darkness, or spiritual darkness, right? Now, Israel's true purpose, as we know from the scripture, was to be a nation of the priesthood, all right? Now, now here's where they, where they have um, the British or the English queen, you know, saying coming in after the 400-year period of time. So we see the founding of the colonies, roughly 1607, 400 years, you know, and then which was 2007, significant, because that's the Ethiopian millennium, right? That's the Ethiopian millennium right there. So we're beginning to see these connections all over the place, these numerical connections. And our numbers are very important because, okay, here we go. Numbers are very important because the universe functions off also digitally, all right, and how Yeshua HaMashiach, you know, with the finger of God, the digital, so there's numeric to it. But that's getting a little bit, I'm not going to say deep, but we want to just keep it on this basic level that Israel, and when we say Israel, we're saying the lost sheep, the real Israel, the ethnic Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews, so-called black people so-called African-American, Caribbean, Puerto Rican, um, um, Cuban or Cuban, you know, all throughout this, this, the four corners of the earth we've been scattered. But particularly in this hemisphere, since the trans-Ethiopic Ocean slave trade, because in this documentary and other places, one still say the trans-Atlantic slave trade, but if you check it out for yourself, you recognize that the, um, the, the South, so-called Atlantic, at that time was called the Ethiopic Ocean, 
That's interesting when you look at the map because Ethiopia is on the other side of the map, and then that's East Africa, and then West Africa is called the Trans Ethiopia or the Ethiopic Ocean. So you can check maps from that period. Now, the true Beta Israel's purpose at first was to be a nation of the priesthood, and that was to bring light, to bring truth and light, like the Umim and the Tumim, right, to the so called Goyim, to the, to the Gentiles to the so-called pagans, who we can call today as the non-Ethiopian Hebrew nations. You understand? Mainly focused on the Europe, the area of Europe, or the north, or, 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 what, or what are called the, the Japhethites, the land that was originally inhabited by the Japhethites. Um, concerning, so this light was to be concerning the one true God, or Ha Elohim, Yahweh, the one true God, he who be who he be, his divine majesty. And then finally, the Mashiach, the Messiah, would come to bring light to the world, according to um, Johannes um, Wengel, uh, John's Gospel, John's Good News, chapter 8, verse 12. Thus, there are two mysteries, right? There are two mysteries in the scripture. There are two mysteries that are in operation. So let's understand this right here. There are two mysteries in operation, right? Let's just bring this out a little bit, right? Two mysteries in operation, right? Um, and the two mysteries in operation, what are these two mysteries in operation? There's the, there's the mystery of iniquity or the mystery of rebellion. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty clear in the world if you look around today, ain't it? Yovis. And then there is the mystery of, of righteousness, or also called the mystery of God in Christ. Right? The mystery of God in Christ, the mystery of Ha Elohim in the Moshiach. All right. Um, you have the can you bring up the other Yeshua the face, the, the, the close up, the, the one um Yesus, the dreadlock, or one who will say is a dreadlock, um um Yeshua, let's see if we can bring that one up as well. All right, the mystery of God in Christ. All right, let's see. Just look up Yesus. Um, and all right, it should come up. All right. Um, so these two mysteries. There's two mysteries, right? There's two mysteries in operation. So there's the mystery of iniquity, the re mystery of rebellion, and we find that in Romans 16. 25, as well as 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7, right? And most important for us, right, is the mystery of righteousness. You remember the Beit Israel, they had a zeal for, for God. You understand? But they lacked the knowledge, and they went about seeking to set up their own righteousness. You know, and that, that's very important for us to understand as Beit Israel, because I see that many even in the Beta Israel or the Hebrew Israelite consciousness are rejecting Ethiopia, rejecting the King of Kings, they're rejecting the evidence, seeking to set up their own righteousness again. You understand? But now both of these mysteries, right, they function through time, right, which began in the realm. All these began in the realm of what they call eternity, all right, eternity, before falling into this temporal this temporal world that we are in right now. Now, in reading over that, they also went on to state, and I'll just share this right here, went on to state that most students of the Bible and most so-called Christian ministers, they do not understand the so-called philosophy or the rationale behind the so-called worship of Lucifer or of Satan because the reason why they understand a lot of this as well, so they understand the mystery of iniquity really well, even though many of us can see it in operation almost on a daily basis when we watch the news or whatever like that, you know, was a, or hear about what's going on. Um, but it's because they have a superficial lack, right, a superficial lack, uh, I mean, a superficial understanding and a lack of, of, of overstanding of the ancient religious history, the ancient world history, you know, understand, of who's who. Yovas and a total lack of understanding of the purpose of the true God of Ha Elohim. 
That's why it says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. You see what I'm saying? My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Now, I wanted to just touch on that right there because these are points that we have been speaking on, you know, um, in the spirit, you know, being guided by the spirit. But then when we caught this right here and how it connects with the whole deeper mystery of so-called so -called Illuminati and the Freemason. Now, let me just bring this... Um, bring this up right here, all right, let's, let's bring this over, all right, now, that right there is like a blasphemy, you know, that, to even think that his majesty was a Freemason, because when you understand what Freemasonry is about, and how Ethiopia's claims, you understand ancient claims, the spirituality, the building, to, to math and science is far older than anything in the West, that's why you have to stay tuned for the God particle. Right, at, at, you know, E.T. is E.T.S. Ethiopian is this uh, is it a link to the God particle? Right, at last the God particle has been discovered. Well, it's been around for actually a while. All right, as the people are returning, as we're returning to our true knowledge of who we are, as Beta Israel. All right, so let's touch on this right here. I don't know if you can see this. Let's bring this down so you can see this. Um, I don't know if you can see this too well, but we'll we'll go over it right here. Now, this is on the whole 16, 16, uh, 16, 19 to um, 2012, right? 16, 19, excuse me, 2019. So there's been a lot of talk about 2012, right, in the news, 2012, 2012, all right? And it's the end of the world. Now, you ready for 2012? And... And, and and what they are trying to do, and they might be somewhat successful, you over, I mean, when you understand that um, even in Genesis it says that the imagination of people was, was, was wickedness, was evil continually. And through that imagination, you understand, and as one's dabbling in all these so-called cult or spiritualities, all right, through that imagination they're able to project many illusions, all right, and keep people in the multiplicity of uh, and a phenomena of illusions and delusions. It even says so in Thessalonians that strong delusion would be sent on the people so they would believe a lie. Now, this is a critical period we are in right now, you know, and unless we understand this time factor as it pertains, see the 1530 to 1930, that links with. Ethiopia that links with the African and Sion, represented in the person of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. All right, that that's that part of that link right there. Um, 1492, right to 1892, the birth of that son of man, Lij Tefari, who is to be known as Rastafari and and crowned and sat upon the throne of David. All right, as Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So there's much in this that once we begin to digest this, we are able to um, um, correct, you understand, the, the miseducation and, dis, and the disinformation. Now, I think this is important for us to understand about this particular date and time and then compare this with this chart right here. Let's see if we can bring this, bring this up a little bit, all right? Um, so let's, let's go right here, right? What do we have right here? Okay, we have, um, all right, what do we have right here? We have, uh, 2010, all right? We, now, we have these particular psalms that are known as the Hallel Psalms, all right, the Hallel Psalms. Now, in, in, in true Israel and Old Testament Israel, these were the pilgrimage psalms, right? The pilgrimage psalms, and there were three or the Shalosh, right, or Regalim, these three pilgrim festivals, these three um, pilgrim festivals where ones would go up to Jerusalem. Now, this period of time is one of those. So it's very important for us to understand how, how God's time works. Now, if you look at this right here, it goes from 2010, right? We get to 2012 right here, right? We get to 2012 right here. Uh-huh, and then we get to 2013, which is next year, and Psalm um, 113, 
right, is linked with fat. Let's bring this down just a little bit more. 113 is linked with fat. Then we have um, at the center 2014, all right, 2014, there's some words there that we're not able to, this it says serpent's lamp, I don't know if it said that over there, all right, 2014, right, and then we get to 2018. Now, I asked myself, with this whole 2012 thing, I asked myself, 2012, now, those of us who've been studying the Kenak Otat Er and, and the difference between the Gregorian and Julian calendars and the and how the Ethiopian time um, calculation is more accurate in a biblical sense, because this will be the year 7,505 in the book of Adam and Eve, one of the apocryphal books. We learn about the 5,500 years until the Moshiach comes, right, until the Moshiach, Yeshua, had come. And then there was a dispensation of roughly, roughly 2,000 or so years, and then we come to the Ethiopian millennium, in 2007, all right, and that now also is linked with this particular um, thing that we were watching in this video here, where the British or the English Queen, she came to visit her former colony. Now, we'll point out another vid, you can find it out there, another vid about um, 2012 prophesied by slave master, and you can check that out. Where, if you look in the Woody Lynch How to Make a Slave Papers, you will see that it says that um, for 300 years. So when you um, add that 300 years, right, from 17 something, 17 what was it, um, to um, 2012. Right, 1712. Yeah, so that he was on the banks of the James River, Willie Lynch. All right, um, and he was instructing the Gentiles how they can keep the Beit Israel in this perpetual slavery, right? And so that this could potentially go on forever. But it mentioned even like it said like 300 years. Now it's interesting that 300 year period of time. Well, we notice what this particular year is as well. But I want you to keep in mind 2019 because when I looked at the Ethiopian calendar, right, for example, the year 2000, right, in the West was not the year 2000 in Ethiopia. In fact, the Ethiopian year 2000 was 2007. Now, roughly that's a seven year plus a couple of months. If you round it off like we were taught to do in math, you round it off to eight years. Now, it's interesting, so I said 8. So, if, it, if it's 20, is it 2012 or is it 2020? Now, what settles it, right, is when we look at the curse of the Beta Israel, when we look at this 400-year period of time, 1619 to 2019, and this consciousness that is rising up from all different quarters, you know, amongst I and I people, a renewed interest into to what our true heritage and our divine heritage is and, and the and the and the rock, the foundation that we are Beta Israel. So I say that is it twenty twelve really that we should be thinking about as the Beta Israel, right? Or recognize that yes, this is a heavenly rotation that has significance only when we look at it through the covenant spectacle, and we recognize the heavens as a clock, but if we look at the divine time and look at our history as a people, then this 1619 to 2019, 2012 or 2020, you know, 2020, and that's often said to be good vision, all right? So we're going to touch on this a little bit more, but we wanted to just make a, make a word on 2012 or 2020. And in 2020, because the Ethiopian calendar still maintains what? The, the Julian, right? They call it the Julian. And the Western calendar is the so-called Gregorian. But it's significant, the eight year, right? And, and the role that Ethiopia plays also in this equation and how we, you know, the, the old time is said, um, uh, Ethiopians at home and abroad. And some thought that they were just speaking, well, because, um, you know, because we're black people. You understand? Now we get to learn by studying the scriptures and, and looking at prophecy and revelation 
that there's much more significance to it than just the fact that we are black. All right? So just on the time, the time thing right there, 2012 or 2020, well, if we look at it from a Hebrew, a Beit Israel perspective, we see 1619 to 2019, all right? What is the significance of that and with other, how can we say, other heavenly signs? See, the Gentiles, the Goyim, they worship the heavenly signs, right? They, they, they worship them, right? But the Beit Israel role was to bring light to the Gentiles. Now, Think about this. If the Almighty created the Beit to Israel to bring light to the Gentiles, right, and Israel, right, went astray from that, all right, now just check out all this evil and check out this, the, the, the reasons why when we look in the curses for disobedience, they have been so heavy upon us. But here's the good news. The good news is Yeshua. Right? The good news for us is Yeshua. The good news for us is the King of Kings, right? the King of Kings and his Christ. The good news for us is also Ethiopia. If we would grow, right? if we would grow up and get off of all of this um, establishment of our own righteousness and recognize the righteousness of God and Christ or of Yeshua, and his father, all right, my brothers and sisters, so um, this is a little bit on time, it wasn't all prepared like that, but we just wanted just to freely speak to you and share this with you, and I'm sure that those who um, have been studying this will find this to be um, hopefully interesting and, and informative, so once again, in a rasi adinos teferinen wendem yadon, Yadon, like Jadon and, and Nehemiah, Nehemiah 3 and 7, um, of the line of Judah Society, and broadcasting on Rastafari Sabbatical channel on the YouTube, as well as Ethiopian World Net. And if there's an emergency and that channel doesn't come up, just put Ethiopian World Net um, 911. Shalom Rastafari.